Uh, I'm delighted to be with everybody. Um, and since we gather in a, uh, a bipartisan or nonpartisan spirit, I thought I would uh, begin by invoking our last great Republican president, Abraham Lincoln, who uh, <laughs> sp spoke of government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Uh, we obviously didn't start that way. We began as a slave republic. Uh, of Christian white male property owners over the age of 21. But even with that very narrow exclusionary uh, democracy that or republic that we began with, um, corporations were held on an extremely tight leash. There were just a handful of corporations in the country. They were uh, closely guarded. They were feared by uh, many of our founders, including Thomas Jefferson, who wrote, uh, widely and disparagingly of corporations. Um, and they were chartered for very specific purposes, like to build a bridge. Um, and they could make money along the way as long as they were engaged in that public mission. And when that mission was completed, then the charter was up and then somebody else could seek a charter or they would do something else. Now, obviously, we've moved very far afield from that concept of what a corporation is. And the, you know, we don't have time to get into the whole history of it, but the the, the Delaware uh, corporate code basically set the standard um, in the 19th and early 20th century by saying that business corporations could operate for any lawful purpose at all. And so their charters wouldn't be reviewed to see whether they were actually serving public purposes and public functions. Um, that idea is deeply entrenched in our law now. Um, and in fact, if in most states, if corporations do anything other than seek to enhance the bottom line of the shareholders, they're acting ultra virus, meaning outside of um, the legal charter of the corporation, and they could be sued by the shareholders in derivative litigation for basically betraying the shareholders by not trying to enlarge the profit of the corporation. The benefit corporation model uh, arose in the year 2010. Uh, which, if you can think back a couple of years, was kind of a, a startling year um, because we had just experienced major crises of corporate power, if you think about it. We had the subprime uh, mortgage crisis and meltdown uh, brought to us by AIG and Wall Street that destroyed trillions of dollars of wealth in the American people in terms of people's home values, in terms of their jobs and their retirement funds and so on. Um, we had the BP oil spill, <clears throat> which um, uh, essentially wrecked the ecosystem of the Gulf of Mexico, uh, causing hundreds of billions of dollars of damage. We had the collapsing uh, coal mines of the Massey Corporation in West Virginia, and yet, when the congressional elections came around uh, in 2010, uh, the mantra of the Republican Party, which swept those elections, was deregulate and get government off of the backs of business and off of the backs of the corporations, as if we could get any more off of the backs of business than we already had through the familiar process of corporate regulatory capture, capture of the agencies that are supposed to be regulating them. Um, well. Uh, I introduced legislation in the same year uh, to get back a little bit towards the model of the corporation that the nation began with, and it was to create a benefit corporation that is allowing businesses to incorporate for profit-making purposes, but also in order to enhance both a general public benefit and then a specific benefit to the public that would be built into the DNA of the business, into the charter of the business that could be declared by the business up front. And it passed uh, overwhelmingly because it's purely voluntary. It doesn't require all corporations to have a public purpose, but at least says the ones that want to can. Now, people ask the question, well, why would a business do this if they don't have to? Aren't they just sort of undermining themselves in terms of what all the other corporations are doing, which is just essentially seeking profit? Um, well, there are at least two important reasons um, that businesses would do and are doing this, registering as benefit corporations. Um, one is that uh, if they begin with a public idea and that becomes central to the ethos of the company, so think about Ben and Jerry's, for example, um, if, the country, if the company goes public uh, and there is uh, 
a bidder who wants to take the company over, but the business doesn't think that um, the raider or the takeover company wants to do uh, justice to the social mission of the business. Right now, or as Ben and Jerry will tell you, the, you know, then there was nothing that could be done. Basically, if they spurned the highest bid, uh, they could be sued by the shareholders for not making as much money as possible, even if they feel like they're selling the soul of the corporation, even if the, you know, the, the takeover artist isn't really interested in the environmental project of Ben and Jerry's, for example. But under the benefit corporation, the, uh, the board of directors not only can take into account uh, workplace criteria, community social criteria, and environmental criteria, uh, they have to do that. In other words, they've got to incorporate not just what's in the best interest of the shareholders, but what's in the best interest of the community, the workers, and the environment. And that goes not just for a point of a possible takeover bid, but throughout the whole business. Um, and these, these companies um, have to meet a third-party um, criteria, a third-party um, regulatory inspection by an independent arbiter, and the main one in the country right now is B-Lab, which is the coalition of B corporations, benefit corporations all over America, um, and it's in New Jersey, and there are um, billions of dollars of company, worth of companies represented already um, in B-Lab. Hundreds of businesses are aligning this way, and this gets to the other reason that the businesses are doing it, um, and the other reason why it's so important to have benefit corporation laws. The benefit corporation um, tag becomes an, a critical branding mechanism for sending the message to potential workers, investors, consumers about what kind of company it is. Um, we know that there's a lot of so-called greenwashing going on where there are businesses that will you know, do a community cleanup and say we're a green company while they continue to pollute or you know, traffic with businesses that use child labor or what have you. The benefit corporations agree to abide by very strict criteria uh, governing the workplace, governing who they do business with, and governing uh, environmental standards. So um, this is, you know, I hasten to say this is no panacea for getting us out of the era of BP oil and um, uh, you know, the subprime mortgage meltdown and the Massey Corporation, which speciali specializes in avoiding the law governing um, the mind safety standards and corrupting politicians, uh, which got so bad that even the Supreme Court uh, essentially said that um, a, a justice of the West Virginia Supreme Court who was elected uh, by virtue of the spending of Massey money uh, could not sit on a case that dealt with Massey. Um, but so, you know, I don't think that the benefit corporations alone are going to be able to get us out of this period. We've got to rebuild the regulatory fences and do a lot of the things that you're going to hear about from uh, Gar Alperovitz and from Daphne. Um, but I think that the benefit corporation piece of this is part of the puzzle because it speaks to a very deeply felt need on the part of communities to have businesses that are locally rooted, that are invested in the community, and want to make change, and want to stay rooted, and not just take whatever they can get, corrupt the regulatory agencies, corrupt the politicians, and move the profits overseas. And I'll tell you just about um, two benefit corporations in my district uh, that have formed since 2010. Uh, one is called Blessed Coffee. It was started by uh, an Ethiopian uh, American uh, immigrant, uh, Tababu Asefa, um, and he's importing coffee from his native Ethiopia on uh, fair trade standards uh, into Maryland. He is selling it wholesale, and he's also starting a coffee shop where people can come, and he plans to use that as a public uh, space and center for community activity, and he's giving 25% um, of all profits he makes to educational organizations and activities 
both in Silver Spring and Tacoma Park, where he's located, and also back in Ethiopia. Another one is a, a pet supply store called the Big Bad Wolf. They've registered as a benefit corporation, and they're doing their pet supply business, but on the weekends, they do animal rescue. They are advocating for animal welfare and animal rights, so it's parallel to their mission, but it's not a profit-making part of their business, and so those are the kind of businesses that we want to root into the community, and I think that's what economic recovery looks like, because um, the Fortune 500 are not going to save us, as Gar's new book uh, explains in great detail. Um, so the benefit corporation law has spread to a bunch of other states, from California to New York, Virginia, New Jersey, Hawaii. It's spreading all over the place. So I, I just want to you know, alert you to the fact that Maryland is a leader in terms of trying to rethink the economy in the interests of um, uh, the needs uh, of the people of our communities and to serve uh, the prosperity and the common good of everybody.